front. <laughs> there we go, we found them. <laughs> so that's awesome. So they're right here in front of us. High five, Seb. <laughs> that's so cool, I'm so excited. I love it when we find things after tracking. It always makes me so much happier. And there our gamble paid off just to come into the block and have a look because, well, you can see they weren't very far off the road actually. And we would have done lots of circles around trying to find them had we not just come this way. So that's so cool. Hello girls. <laughs> Sorry, Meg, I got a bit distracted by seeing the lines, but it looks like just three females. It doesn't, oh, here the cubs are. Hey guys. So I think the Birminghams are slowly starting to expand given that they have not actually um, been down to Londo's before and they're starting to spend more and more time in that area. Now you can see Aubrey's here as well. He came from the southern side and we literally just bumped into these lions at the exact same time. So as I saw them, he saw them and that's why he's also here because he came from the southern side just to see if they hadn't gone more towards Vubu Galago area, but there we go in Kahuma Pride and it looks like they're gonna start getting moving Shame and there's one female's got badly injured on her back. L look at that. See that one? No, to the right. You see the one standing up there She's got uh, lots of new cuts all over her back there that one there on the left So she's got a big fresh wound on around the tail area and it looks like one on her leg as well So I don't know where who they've run into recently but there's definitely a few signs and we know that they went down towards Londolozzi and I wonder if they didn't have a little run in with somebody else down there but that's the same female that had that big cut the other day on the inside of her leg which looks like it's been opened up again and so interesting to see now in terms of cubs I can see at the moment only the two lying closest to me and then I can see one two three four adult lionesses at this stage but there are some more cubs behind this bush that i'm just battling to actually see at this stage so it seems like everybody's there yeah, there's, cubs, yeah. there's more cubs there at the back that are just tucked in behind the tree so i think we we've pretty much got most of the pride here what is very evident is that they are looking quite skinny all of them so a meal would be a good thing for them and it just shows you how quickly they digest and process food we know we saw them on a zebra kill on when was it Thursday last week so that's not that long ago and already they're much skinnier than when the last time we saw them they've sort of digested all of that food very quickly and they've traveled a long distance so they would have burned quite a bit of energy by going all the way down towards Londolozzi and back and that's why they're looking a little bit on the skinny side so I think these lionesses are going to be very much looking for food this afternoon that's for sure they're going to try and get out and try and see if they can't find anything and even this morning it's cool enough this morning to allow them to actually start moving around so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see it the cubs look as though they're not going anywhere they're all tucked up in tight little balls and are not interested in really making their way anywhere at this stage but the females are alert one female still standing up at the at the far end there but right in the thickest I can just see her ears and then the rest of them are got heads up but are still resting quite a bit so I think I'm gonna just change our position a little bit and just see if we can't get a sort of better view of the actual pride itself. Now isn't this cool though? So good to see the Nkumas. I love when we get to find them. They're such a cool pride and generally are quite active actually. I've been very fortunate while I've been here that the Nkuma pride has seemed to be a lot more active than some of the other prides that I've followed and particularly the Birmingham boys who tend to just really sleep most of the time so there's one lioness that is just slowly moving off and I'm gonna try and keep up with her because I reckon the rest of the pride is slowly but surely going to follow her you can see them all lying here so they're all on our left hand side but I'm gonna go down to this female that's moving and then like I say hopefully the rest are going to start to follow you can see her just moving off just in front of me here so she's cutting across and you can see what I mean about them being a little bit on the skinny side they're not bad but it would definitely could do with the meal Simranjit, you're wondering if a lion's home range depends on certain factors. 
Well, there's two things. Firstly, lions don't really have a home range. They have a territory which they actively defend. A home range it's basically describes an area which animals will move around in loosely. They don't defend it, they don't have a territory, and they don't really look after it. And so that's the difference between a territory and a home range. The Inkawama Pride's territory is set up and they will then try and defend it against others and it will only move and shift and flow if there's sort of space for them to do that and if there is a reason for it. In terms of what's determines that territory one is its density of other lions so other lions that are in the area that will be either less or sort of weaker or stronger will dictate whether they gain or, or uh, lose ground that's also and then it's prey animals as well as resources like water and so you'll find most prides will try and set up around a area with a healthy water source that is pretty permanent and then as time goes on if it gets to drought areas then you'll find there's a bit more movement within those lines but generally there's a high density like there is in this part of the world then the lions can't move too much even when there's a drought and they become either then less successful or more successful if they're able to either survive it or unfortunately not now where is she gone i don't see the rest of the pride yeah here comes the rest of the pride they're just on our left starting to move now Seb. so it looks like the rest of them are starting to come down and i would imagine if they're going to start moving then the cubs will start coming as well ah so alex you're 12 years old and you're a new viewer hello Alex and welcome to the largest safari vehicle in the world and I hope you're going to love spending time with us and ask lots of questions and you want to know how long these cubs are going to stay with their moms well the cubs will normally stay if they're females for the rest of their life they will stay with the pride they'll join the pride and become one with them and they'll just become part of the pride itself so they're never going to leave their mothers really if they're a boy lion well then they're going to unfortunately be chased off by the big daddy lions and so they're going to end up being pushed out and unfortunately will probably leave at around three and a half to four years old depending on how tolerant the male is if he's if he doesn't mind the cubs too much then he'll sometimes let it slide to about four years but most of the time it's between sort of three and three and a half that they then get pushed out and have to go and fend for themselves whereas the females will spend time doing their thing now you can see it is very thick in here it is still misty and so not easy to see where our lions are going they look as though they might settle down again in that little thicket i was hoping that they were going to come down i see this lioness in front of me is now starting to walk again she's also seems to be on some sort of a mission of her own i wonder where she's off to let's see i just the problem is is she's heading north again which is not what i wanted i was hoping she was going to head south but it seems like she's heading north and this is pretty typical of the of the pride's movements this morning they seem to be doing this kind of movement the whole morning where they're just going back and forth and back and forth and i don't know if maybe either they're looking for somebody or they're trying to find prey items inside these areas but here comes another lioness oh she is beautiful look at that is that not just the most wonderful thing Seb, i'm going to try to go forward a bit for you because that branch is in your way Hopefully she's going to come through. But look at that in that golden morning light. Is that not wonderful? Absolutely amazing. And look at the size of these guys as they come past the car. They are massive. Even for females, the Nkuma Pride are really, really big girls. And you can see the one female wants to go. She keeps stopping and looking behind her and hoping that the rest are following. Now there is another lioness that's just stopped and looked from behind her. She's in the long grass and slowly is coming now. And actually there come the rest of them. They're one by one starting to file down towards us. So we've seen two adult lionesses and here comes another two. So, Michael, you're wondering if any of the other lionesses have wounds. Not that I can see, Michael. It looks like all the rest are pretty okay. Now, this is the female that's got the cataract or that eye that is deteriorating. So she's also here, and she looks as though she's absolutely fine with no visible sort of bite marks or anything like that. So they look okay. Now, let's see. The next female coming. Is this the one with the wounds on her? I think that might be Amber Eyes that's now coming at the back there. Could be her. I can't see nicely if it is. Hopefully she'll look this way and I'll be able to see. Are you going to...
to look at us. Okay, there we go. So there's Amber Eyes. She's also here and is looking around and is looking as healthy as ever. So she's got no visible scarring on her. So these first four females, none of it. And there's just the one female that's got that scarring. And I wonder, some part of me thinks that maybe, just maybe, that female that's got all the wounds might have been the mother of that cub and maybe just maybe tried to defend that cub in some situation and that's why she's got hurt the rest of them look all absolutely fine there's no sort of scarring on them we can see that amber eyes doesn't look as though she's got swollen teats mm, i'm not sure it's so karen you're wondering if they could be hurt by trying to get a kill well karen it's possible that that could have happened but i don't think so. I think the Inkuma Pride, the only time they would try and get a kill would be if it's from maybe a leopard. Um, it's very seldom you'll find lions will try and steal from other lions unless it's a pride of five like this going after one female maybe. Um, you'll find that generally they are pretty wary of other prides on a kill and if it's males on a kill then well no not at all they're not going to go anywhere near it we saw last week when they were on that kill with Tinyo how he was so dominant over that carcass he pushed these lionesses away all the time and he was really dominant over it and a lot of threat displays a lot of growling to try and ward them off and so the females back down very quickly the, the cubs are a little bit more cheeky but the females themselves back down very fast just going forward here oh now excuse me if i'm sniffling a little bit it was really cold this morning <laughs> so the nose was running a little bit so dear watch are you asking whether the injuries could be from mating well while that is a possibility, I don't think so. The, given the, re the reason why, and, and this is why I'll say this, is because if we look on the neck area of that injured lioness, she's got no sort of signs of bite marks on her neck, which is very common when mating. When they mate, the male will clamp down on the back of the neck and bite, and that causes a bit of loss of fur, which we don't see. Well, I haven't seen on that lioness with the injuries. It looks more like she was grabbed by the tail area, and she was bitten on the tail and on the back leg. And that's what it looks like. Now, I think this is her coming along now, Seb. So let's have a look. Um, is this you, girl? It's difficult to see now where they're all going because they're all splitting into different directions. But I think this might be her. Yes, this is her with the wound. So you see on her back there, she doesn't have too much. It's on the inside of her leg and then one around the tail that has a bad wound there. So there you can see that big hole in her back. Now that's just from a tooth that's Ooh. plain and simple. That's what a tooth wound looks like. And while it looks really bad and really painful, and I'm sure it is a little bit painful, it will heal. That's nothing that we need to worry about too much. We know Mfumo had that big hole in his face, which was much worse than what you see on that tail. And his face would have been a place where there would have been lots of meat and all kinds of rotting stuff going into it, whereas her tail is going to be a little bit cleaner in terms of that, and she'll be able to groom it a lot more effectively than what Mfumo was able to groom his face. And so that wound, while it looks really bad, should heal up just fine and she should be all right the way she's walking is 100 percent. she was walking in front of me and there was no issues now it looks like they're actually going into stalk mode you see this female here she's changed her whole body language she's now dropping a little bit lower and i wonder if they haven't spotted something here the body language of these lions is of one of that they've seen something and they are now in hunting mode they're all going a little bit more gingerly they're all sort of standing up so we've got one two three four and five right in the distance they're all here and let's see if she's going to lie down. She's going to sit down there and watch what's going to go on. Now, there's another lioness just into the front of her. And then the other three are all lined up straight behind this lioness. So there we go. And you can see they're definitely a lot more intent in what's going on. So, Pete, you're wondering if they do, cats do all their hunting at night. Well, no. So, cheetah actually do most of their hunting during the day. Oh, hello, little cub. Where did you come from? And the lions actually, at any stage, they're opportunistic. So, as soon as there's any sign of food, they'll take it. So, lions will hunt day and night. And same with leopard. I've seen leopards hunting at 12 o'clock midday in 42 degrees heat or 120 degrees Fahrenheit no problem so they hunt out of any time as long as the opportunity presents itself but in saying that 
the heightened level or period of activity for them to hunt is normally just after dusk and just before dawn. That's when they really start to concentrate on hunting. Hello little one, are you tired? You're not going to be dragged around anymore. And the rest of them are slowly filtering through from the back as well. There they come. So HA, you're wondering if any of the cubs utilize the vehicle during a hunt. HA, I'm not sure. Oh, look at that, isn't that amazing? Just loving seeing these little cubs getting so big. It really is cool. Um, in terms of utilizing the vehicles for hunting, I haven't seen the cubs do that. Um, to be honest, I think they're still too small to participate in hunt, and I haven't seen them come anywhere near the car. The last time I saw the Impum was trying to chase that leopard, all the cubs just lay down. And the good news is that all six are here. I can see now in this line, we've got one in front, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth one right at the back. So all six are here, all six are healthy, but no sign of that little cub at all. So I wonder... I don't know if that little cub is still with us, to be honest. The fact of the matter is these is none of them that we've watched coming past, seem to be producing milk, and it just doesn't look like it at all. Now, this little cub, it seems as though they've had a swat on the nose, this one in front. She's got a nice little scar across the muzzle. There we go. So you can just see it there. So it seems like they've had a run-in somewhere with somebody, and I wonder if that's maybe why they're not back in this area. This is so cool, just having them filing past us one by one. Wow, what a way to be starting the day, and especially to be coming back onto Juma after a day off. Isn't this a fantastic way? Seb, are you happy? I'm so excited. <laughs> Seb's happy too. Now, I think Ali might put me back on the couch again tonight because <laughs> she told me this morning if she didn't see wild dogs, she wanted to try find lions and well, here they are so hopefully they don't go north hopefully they'll still be around and she can come and see them this afternoon but yes she <laughs> might put me back on the couch for finding lions she loves lions and well it's hard not to love them when you have a situation like this and they're all just kind of filing past but the females are on and off again and going further so I'm going to try and just catch up with them So Jillian, you're wondering why the big cats never walk with their tails straight up. Well, most of the cats that are out here in the wild don't do that. And the reason why is that a, cat, a tail is very tall and generally has a bright marking towards the end of it. And that means that it gets seen by everything. And so when the big cats are walking, they want to try and keep that tail as low as possible to not give themselves away. So in the case of the lions, that black tip contrasts against the grass heavily and prey animals are going to be able to spot that quite quickly. And so that's why they try and keep it down. Within case of a leopard, they've got that very wide white tip to the tail and the white tip of the tail is not going to be very good for when hunting now like I said the rest of the pride is moving off so I'm gonna try and catch up with them and see where they go because they're going into a horrible horrible area and so hopefully we'll be able to get to where they are before they disappear and while we do that let's go across to Ali and see how her leopard tracking is going and whether or not she's had any luck with any animals at all